we are here this morning to announce my office's report on a multi-year investigation into child sex abuse by members of the Catholic clergy in the state of Illinois. And this is our report. This report represents the state of Illinois' first comprehensive accounting of child sex abuse by members of the Catholic clergy in the six dioceses across Illinois, including the Diocese of Belleville, Joliet, Peoria, Rockford, Springfield, and the Archdiocese of Chicago. This investigation began in the latter half of 2018 under the leadership of then Attorney General Lisa Madigan. Even before I was sworn into office, I committed to continuing the investigation that my predecessor had initiated. Throughout the investigation, we had two goals. First, to obtain and provide a full public accounting of substantiated child sex abuse committed by Catholic clergy within the state of Illinois. Second, to give survivors an opportunity to be heard, recognizing that some of these survivors have spent decades, decades on their path to healing. From the outset of the investigation, uh, the leaders of the Illinois Diocese pledged their full support and cooperation in assisting my office towards achieving these goals. Each ultimately fulfilled their pledge by providing access and working on policies and procedures. During our investigation, my attorneys and investigators examined thousands of files, reviewing more than 100,000 100, pages of documents held by the diocese. They spent endless hours engaged in interviews and conversations with the diocesan uh, leadership and representations. Cooperation from the diocese aside, it was the survivors of child sex abuse who gave purpose and drive to this investigation. Absent their courage and willingness to come forward and discuss their experience, there would be no true investigative report. Over the course of this investigation, my office received more than 600 confidential contacts from survivors through emails, letters, in-person interviews, and phone calls. My investigation team prioritized treating each allegation with respect. They followed every lead that arose to ensure we conducted a thorough and comprehensive investigation. My team worked closely with survivors to record accounts of their experiences as children sexually abused by Catholic clerics. So I would like to express my sincere gratitude to each and every survivor and to others who contacted my office for trusting us with their deeply personal experiences. Before the, this investigation, the Catholic Diocese of Illinois publicly listed only 103 substantiated sex child sex abusers, which substantiated meaning that available evidence supported the conclusion that cleric, the cleric or religious brother committed to child sex abuse. Now by comparison, this report reveals the names and detailed information of 451 Catholic clerics and religious brothers who abuse at least 1,997 children across all of the dioceses in the state of Illinois. This means that our investigation led to the disclosure of 348 more clerics than prior to our investigation. Now, there are 149 clerics that this report discloses that are not disclosed by the diocese. This report is organized into five sections. The first section explains the long-term impact of child sex abuse. 
which is particularly critical in this context. The second details each diocese historic handling of child sex abuse and specifically how inaction by Catholic bishops and archbishops often led to scores of abused children. The section also includes detailed narrative accounts of child sex abuse committed by Catholic clerics. Many of these narratives are told from the survivor's point of view, written in consultation with the survivor and based upon their experience. The third section covers diocese policies and practices related to allegations of child sex abuse. Our team had multiple conversations with uh, various members of each diocese. This section includes concerns my office raised with the diocese about their policies, revealing how the diocese often modified their policies to address these concerns. When agreement couldn't be reached for modifications, our office made recommendations. The fourth section discusses data analysis undertaken by my office with a recognized data expert showing the extent of child sex abuse by clerics in each Illinois diocese year by year over a 70 year period. Data expert Greg Ridgway reviewed the data that our office compiled. Significantly, the analysis reveals that each Illinois diocese underreported the number of child sex abusers in the Catholic clergy when they initially released those numbers to the public. And finally, one of the most important sections of the report, my office's recommendations to the diocese for the handling of future child sex abuse allegations against the Catholic clerics and religious brothers. This section of our report is distinguishable from similar re reports issued by other states, not only because it's survivor-centered, but also because it contains 50 pages of detailed recommendations, such as how the diocese can address investigations and disclosures of child sex abuse, how the diocese can implement a mediation and compensation program for survivors, how the diocese can improve their investigations, how the diocese can better communicate with survivors, and how the diocese can be more transparent in publicly disclosing substantiated child sex abusers. This investigation has directly resulted in significant steps forward in the diocese policies related to investigations, disclosure and transparency, and survivor care and communication. Decades of Catholic leadership decisions and policies have allowed known child sex abusers to hide, often in plain sight. And because of the statute of limitations has frequently expired, many survivors of child sex abuse at the hands of Catholic clerics will never see justice in a legal sense. But it is my sincere hope that this report will shine light on those who violated their positions of power and trust to abuse innocent children and on the men in church leadership who covered up that abuse. These perpetrators may never be held accountable in a court of law, but by naming them in this report, the intention is to provide the public with accountability, public accountability and a measure of healing to survivors who have long suffered in silence. Our office takes every instance, instance of reported child abuse seriously, and I believe the breadth of this 700-page report invents that. Moreover, we engage a consultant to design a website to ensure this information is easily accessible to the public. Nevertheless, the reality of child sex abuse does not end with this report. Consequently, I'd like to conclude by directing the public to appropriate agencies 
that can provide continued assistance and support. <coughs> to report current child abuse allegations, we encourage you to contact the Department of Children and Family Services. And for past child abuse, the Survivors Network of those abused by priests or SNAP can offer meaningful direction and support. I thank you uh, for your time and uh, I want to again thank my staff and thank all of the survivors who've come forward and at this point will take uh, questions. Sir, 